at the end of the day, I don't really pay much attention to people who have lots of opinions about lots of things, because if you have lots of opinions about lots of things, you probably just don't know what you're talking about. So tell us a bit about last week. It was a crazy week. You uh, just killed it. And then you got into, no, you didn't get into it. It was a bit of a X Twitter battle going on. So tell us about your, your run in the events at Poker Go and the final trophy. My runs at Poker Go were amazing. I've, I've been a bit unlucky in the Poker Go studio in that I have a lot of seventh places uh, for some reason. It's like I get there, I have some chips, I lose a big hand and, you know, don't make the TV final table. Nobody sees it. <laughs> I've taken a bunch of sevens. But at the end of last year, I won the StormX Invitational, which was a tournament I didn't even know I was going to play. I showed up last second and I won the thing for about 150K, which was great. Um, I showed back up for the kickoff series at the beginning of the year. I took uh, seventh place again, go figure. And uh, the first tournament of the series this time I played, and I think I took a seventh place or maybe a 10th. I don't know. I think I took a seventh and then a 10th back to back. So it's like, okay, okay, seventh, 10th place. I get it. Um, but then I ran hot. It was good. I ended up winning one of the $10,000 buy-in tournaments, which was great. I got... I, I was at a very difficult final table. I got heads up with Alex Foxen, who is a world-class player and managed to come out on top. So that was amazing. And then I played the $15,000 buy-in tournaments and I got absolutely demolished in the first one of those. I think I lost two times in the first three hours. It was absurd. Couldn't make a hand to save my life. Actually, I made a bunch of hands and they were all losers. So I lost <laughs> those pretty hard. And then I played the 25K and it was... um. It was a good tournament for the most part. I found myself in a really tricky spot near the bubble where I made a full house and ended up losing with it. So that left me short stacked. But from there, I just played well enough and managed to make the final table with a short-ish stack. And from there, got a little bit lucky, won some hands, bulldozed the final table and won the 25K. And that gave me the Poker Go Cup. So that's good. I'll take it. No, a crazy week. Crazy. <laughs> it was a crazy week. And there was just so much. Your name must have been mentioned more than any other poker player on Twitter and X the last week. Tell me, what was the controversy that you did a big blind calculation and then Matt Berkey went off and then Daniel jumped in? Tell me a little bit about that uh, setup there. I mean, long story short, yeah. I post all sorts of things on social media that come from videos that I make, right? There's like straight uh, transcriptions to some extent. And I had an interview with Daniel Negreanu a while back where he essentially said, it's fine to pass up on small edges. And he gave an example, which was probably not the best example, but we just took the transcription, posted it. And the uh, idea is that if you are out of position against good players, especially late in a tournament, and you have a hand that will be difficult to play, like ace high, king high, whatever, with some sort of backdoor draw, it's probably okay to fold early in the hand, even though you are giving up a little bit of equity. And that, that's definitely true. It's even more true if you are late in a tournament at the final table against a good player, right? And um, it seems like Berkey likes to latch on to specifics as opposed to broad concepts. Yeah. And he seems to like trying to say that I am generally bad at poker and uh, I don't know what I'm doing, which is fine. You know, that's how some people do marketing. I get it. And... At the end of the day, I don't really pay much attention to people who have lots of opinions about lots of things, because if you have lots of opinions about lots of things, you probably just don't know what you're talking about. So if you don't know what you're talking about, I don't give you any attention. And I think most people who are aware and paying attention have roughly the same view. So, I mean, I'm flattered he gives me so much mind space, but um, I don't give him any. Well, then Phil Galfon jumps in and does some brilliant marketing in a way and says, well, I have this offer for you because then started, you know, going back and forth about uh, the whole thing. And then Daniel jumps in and then Berkey jumps in and it was quite a, and you stayed back and watched the whole thing, which sounds like very much, very Jonathan in a way. I mean, to be fair, I didn't really watch it all that much because I don't care all that much. At the exactly. end of the day, like, I mean, look, it's people talking about nonsense on Twitter. It's like fine and whatever. And I certainly appreciate Negranu getting in there and probably taking up for me because he realizes it's someone trying to tear down someone else's business. And I, I think a lot of people who try to add value and build things don't really like it when people completely unjustifiably try to tear down someone else's business to make theirs look better, right? And um, 
again, I mean, I, I try to let my training site do the talking for itself. I try to let my results do the talking for itself. We have an amazing team of cash game players and tournament players on my site who play the highest stakes on a regular basis. And um, yeah, again, like if you're paying attention, you see what's going on. And, and if you don't, well, uh, yeah, maybe my stuff is not for you. And that's A-OK too. Everyone is not for everyone. And I realize that everyone's marketing tactics are not for everyone. I'm not the uh, person who wants lots of drama in their lives. I'm just focused on doing the work and getting results. Well, what I liked was, I mean, you're the OG. I mean, one of the first coaching sites I ever went on. You read your books and the, the cast of characters you have there and amazing players has been that way throughout the years of your, your business. Uh, but all these people, hundreds of people jumped on to mainly support you. And that was a lot of love directed your way. You had to feel some of that going on, right? Yeah, it feels good to know that I have lots of fans. I mean, we have a gigantic Discord server. I was just in there right, right, right before we had this call talking to them and talking about hands and, you know, again, just like adding value and trying to be helpful. And, and that's, that's how I operate. And if you help out people, they'll tend to help you back out in return. I, le I learned a long time ago, if you give people a good time and you give them money, they will like you. And with my poker training site, we hopefully help them win money, right? So they like that. And we give them a good time. We get in there, we interact, we have events, we have fun. And if you do that over and over and over again, for many, many, many years, you will inevitably generate fans and they'll support you in all sorts of ways that you could not even foresee. Right. Uh, and you had the odds of getting a poker coach to win that last final table because one of my favorite players to work with is Justin Saliba. He's amazing. So that was Yeah, Justin Saliba is great. I, I've been teaching him poker since he was playing 5 cent, 10 cent about seven years ago. And um, now he helps me a ton at pokercoaching.com. He uh, you know, helps with all sorts of the content. He's a world-class player and he teaches me now. So I'm very, very happy that he is having lots of success as well. He's kind of uh, been sort of like me where I had a lot of seventh places. He had a lot of third and fourth places and he took third place in the 25K again. It's just how it goes. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of variance in tournament poker. And it's, I think a lot of people look at people's specific results and think, oh, he doesn't know how to close or something like that. But like in reality, he had just standard spots, played it well, lost a hand, you know? And that's something that I think a lot of onlookers don't necessarily comprehend, but there's, there's a lot of variance and it's, un, it's, it's, it's a fun game. Yeah. Uh, well, the best teachers in the game and best teachers I work with across many different arts or whatever you want to call it in my life, they want their students to, to surpass them and be better. It sounds like your approach, like, wow, I'm learning from Justin now and, and Slick Rick is showing me something I never saw before. These kind of things are happening on your sites and uh, on your coaching and you also share it in all your books. So I think it's a pretty amazing way to operate. Yeah. I mean, so funny enough, I told Justin before the final table, I was rooting for him more than rooting for myself because, you know, I love the guy. I want him to succeed. And, uh, you know, he's certainly deserving of it. I mean, deserving is a funny word in poker, but he certainly worked harder than almost everyone. And he sort of works behind the scenes to help me do the work that I do. So uh, I want all of my students to succeed massively. I mean, that's what I'm going for. And Glad to see him crushing it. And Slick Rick's been crushing it since I've been working with him. And you know, lots of other students are doing well. So that, that's exactly what I'm going for. No, I agree with you. There are three, you know, so many different teachers that te have taught me different things in, in poker over the last years. You have a viewpoint. Uh, Matt, Daniel, everybody has a different thing to offer you. Uh, I went on Twitter and obviously said, well, hey, Jonathan's an OG. I met him like one of your WPT final tables like 17 years ago. And you've been nothing but a gentleman since. So I thought, I posted, he's going to win this one. Watch out, Matt. Don't poke the bear. And you just kicked ass the whole series. It must have been a lot of fun to just be there and celebrate. And I saw you drinking out of the two cups. It was it was fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And look, I, I, I'm not sure that I play any differently, whether things are going good or bad in my life. I think I have a very good mental game across the board. Um, I, I don't think those things impact me, but maybe they do, you know, you never know. But I mean, I played many, many, many long days. I don't think I've ever had a tournament series where I played till 2 a.m. every day because I was making a deep run every day. Um, and one of the tournaments I bubbled actually, so that was another late day. But, you know, I, I feel like I'm pretty good at just showing up and playing good poker. I've been making a point to study a whole lot more recently and making, making a point to play a lot more recently. I sort of took three or four years off when I had my kids to some extent where I was not traveling nearly as much because I had a one-year-old and a three-year-old running around, right? And then my wife needed help at home. So I made a point to stay home a lot. 
but over the last year or so, I've tried to ramp back up and I plan on playing a decent amount more live poker now that the kids are getting a little bit older and they're in school half the time and home, home life's a little bit more taken care of. Well, just like you, I think people know when you poke a bear, like poking Mahomes uh, about the Kansas City, you're the underdog. Well, don't, you know, don't mess with these star people that really have put a lot of years and dedication into a game. It, will, it makes them, I think, rise to another level. Like you said, it may have been unconscious that you were poked a little bit and then you went on to do all these amazing things. You would probably would have done it even without Matt poking you a little bit and back and forth with Galfond. I think you would. Yeah, I mean, I... Again, I don't really feel poked. I just don't care that much. I realize I realize the tactic he is employing is like the same thing a few other people in the poker space have done where they find someone who is doing much better than them and then they try to make them look bad. And if someone puts out a lot of content, inevitably a sentence or two here and there is not going to be 100% accurate or not the best example or whatever. And that's what these people latch onto and they try to say, look how bad this person is, look how great I am. And that's their marketing tactic and... A good, well, a marketing tactic that is something a lot of people use is to find someone that you can try to rally against. And I don't think I'm the best person to rally against because I do most things right. It's not like I'm a controversial person or anything, you know, but apparently he's picked me. So good. I'm flattered. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. But I don't really engage in internet trolls in general. And I, I don't really want to engage with haters. So I mean, it's like, whatever, do your thing. Enjoy yourself. No, okay. And if people like that kind of content, then good. Go for it. He's for them. One last thing. So when Jonathan Little studies, I mean, you just came out with a new book, what, a few months ago? Uh, I yeah. Saw with PMB Publishing. What was the name of it again? 100 Essential Tips to Master No Limit Hold'em. It's a great book, easy to read, where it's 100 chapters discussing right. specific tactics you can use to succeed at poker. Well, what, so uh, you made me think, what does... Jonathan Little do when he studies poker? What do you go into the lab and work on? You look, what weaknesses are you looking at? What things are you evaluating to take your game to the next level? I'm very lucky in that I have pokercoaching.com and I have a lot of the best players in the world available to help me. And um, I'm in a lucky spot where I get a lot of very good information spoon fed to me, for lack of better words, from the best players. They They do all the studying, they do the hard work, and then they tell me the outcome from the hard work. And I mean, like after Justin Sleeba busted the final table, we had a five minute break. I walked out there and he's way better at heads up with a big blind ante than I am. It's a very weird structure. And he gave me a crash course for 10 minutes saying, you know, like check out these ranges, check out these sizings, make sure you're making it five X over the limp, 3.5 X preflop raise, which is not what you would normally do in heads up with no ante. And so, I mean, like, like right there, if, if he did not give me the quick crash course, perhaps I would have screwed up here or there. And I certainly didn't play perfectly or anything, but uh, just getting information like that easily handed to me from one of the best players in the world who I know has been working hard studying with players like Jonathan Jaffe, who is one of the best heads up players in the world. They have some heads up content on poker coaching and they battled a bunch together for content purposes for our students. I'm um, just, just getting that just like given to me, right? Right when I need it is highly beneficial. And I mean, before the $10,000 final table, he made me a 30 minute video going through common ICM spots and, you know, things to do, things not to do, when to maybe take high variance lines, when not to, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of that is my study. I get, I get the best possible information input right into my brain, right, right when I need it. And uh, that, that's always very helpful. Well, congrats. And, and fortunately for poker coaching students, a lot of that stuff is on the site and therefore you, so you can access it whenever you need it. 